Um, apparently you were, you started off already kind of beating everyone in your neighborhood uh, at various different games and magic as well, like very young, at like uh, 11 years old, I think. Is that right? Uh, I mean, my peak in magic was probably when I was 15, 14, but I never played the, uh, uh, you know, like the official, the... Uh, format because uh, it wasn't really profitable and you had to travel worldwide and back in the days I had only Moroccan passport so it was very an issue and they couldn't afford like the cards will change every year so I focused more on the eternal format with all the cards and you know it was more profitable to me I was making money every month and uh, I was supporting myself with that money so I would say my peak in magic was probably when I was 15 mm -hmm. and, and then I switched to poker straight away um, but did you uh, did were you able to make any money with that? It, it, it still sounded like yeah. you were one of the players. yeah. I was making probably four hundred bucks a month, but consider that in Italy is good money. That's you like know, pretty like, good uh, for yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I had my friends going to the work to the beach ten hours a day, like getting crushed and making eight hundred bucks a month. Where <laughs> me, I just played magic, did something that I liked, and I was making good money from it. I, you know, I had a very tough childhood, so I couldn't do anything that uh, wasn't profitable. Like, I couldn't really play the game just to play the game. Often I would get borrow cards to play because I couldn't afford it. But, you know, I was, uh, I never asked my money money for my parents since I'm probably, I don't know, nine years old. Really? So it was always profitable to me, yeah. <laughs> you had to fight, you had to, uh, you had to, like, fend for yourself at nine years old, is that right? Almost. Yeah, I mean, I lived by myself at 15 already, so, like, he was always trying to make money, and I, it wasn't a decision, you know, it wasn't a choice, it was where life put me, and, you know, I had many different problems, family-wise and whatever, so we just tried to get the best out of it, and at the same time, I didn't like the school system, I didn't see myself studying another 15 years to make a normal job, so... I always liked card games and I, in Magic I already figured out that, you know, like if you play better you will make money mm -hmm. and that helped me to move to poker because like it was just more scalable and I felt like, you know, I could make way more money in poker. Even though it took me a lot of time to make good money, but I started straight away. Yeah, I have heard basically a number of Magic players switch basically to poker like Z Justin and David Williams, I think maybe Ike Caxton as yeah. well. Yeah, actually, David uh, also Nacho, Barbero, Noah Boken, countless. Breen comes from Magic as well. Really? Uh, so random. Yeah, yeah you, ha you have a lot of guys. But yeah, I guess like, yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of did something similar, except there wasn't any money in it for me. But I, I, I was essentially one of the best at various different games. And you just take those lessons and you apply them to poker. Yeah, and that's where the podcast comes from. Is winning in the game. Actually, a big, uh, a big, big turning point in my career was like when I was fifteen, I believe. I had this big magic tournament in France. Mm -hmm. So you know, I traveled, I went to play, and uh, close to the top eight was a big field. You know, like so close to getting the most of it. Top eight is like final table in magic. Uh, I played against David Williams. Really, you know, and I was playing. A, yeah, yeah, it was big turning point. I always laugh with him about this because uh, I see this guy, he was there, like, you know, you are at the end, so everybody's super focused. He didn't seem like he really cared. He was there playing for fun. I saw he had the hottest girlfriend I ever seen. And I was like, oh my God, what's, what's the deal with this guy, you know? And I already started to play poker. I was playing in my club in Italy. I was like working as a dealer. And then I asked a friend and he told me, oh, that guy actually is a poker player. He got second in the main event in Vegas. I don't know, three, four years ago, he won six million and, you know, he was in Monaco playing poker. And I was like, okay. <laughs> when I went back, I never played Magic again. I was like, okay, like... Uh, this poker thing doesn't sound too bad. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound so bad. Maybe I should focus on that, you know, like... <laughs> so I always laugh with uh, David about this. You know, I actually, told him many years later. Uh, um, actually, the funny thing is I started to realize... Poker does seem like more and more kind of a dream job in many ways, especially in comparison to many of the other different possible jobs. I mean, I remember uh, I read that you had a lot of different jobs yourself. Can you do you want to start off by talking about that? I mean, not many. I, uh, the main thing I was in the beginning when I started to play poker, I did delivery guy uh, because oh, yeah. like, you know, boy. especially... 
in in the beginning you lose you lose uh, your bank. Actually, I never really lost all my bankroll, but but you know, like uh, if I had to play live or whatever, I used to play and uh, I used to do side jobs as well because like I had to support myself and I was alone. Then after I started to work as a dealer as well. Uh, it was a mix, you know, like when I had money and I could play, I would play, and when I had to work as a dealer, I would work as a dealer. So always a mix. And then I remember his switch when I was 16, maybe 17, and I was like, okay, I just want to play. And I started to put a lot of volume, both online and live, even though online was quite difficult to put volume because I didn't have an internet connection. I didn't have a good computer. It was broken. I was living by myself, so I couldn't afford to buy it. So it was like a lot of challenges to just open Everest poker back in the days and start to play. Then I remember I got the Poker Strategy 50 box. You remember those? Like that yeah. you could do, like there was like this promotion that you could do a poker test and then they would give you 50, 50 box as a bankroll. And uh, I rem many guys started from that. You know, my, me, Ole, also Ole got that 50 box. Like we all laugh about it. You know, 15 years later, we were like, you know, I got this 50 box from Poker Strategy. And we were like, ah, me too. You know, <laughs> so yeah. And then... Well, when I was when I turned 18 is when I started to play also the live circuit and you know I I also been lucky in a way that I was so lucky to be alone and like don't have family support don't have anybody but at the same time it gave me a lot of freedom really early and I could really focus and go 100% on that and I took that decision really early so it was all at the end of the day it was all for the best. Uh, and would you say it? Would you say, I mean, it sounds like it was really the best route to go. It just sounds like it was really tough. It was, it was like, uh, you know, you, you go broke so many times because at the same time you need money to live and it's not like just right. bankroll there. But at the same time, I always, I really always focus on developing a skill set. I never was really money oriented. I never really wanted fancy stuff or like anything like that, but just becoming better and better and then at the end of the day you know when you develop a skill set it doesn't matter like you can go hard time you can go broke but you can always level down and build it back and that was like maybe the biggest the good thing i did really early was always just be focused on developing a skill set and at the same time i really liked uh, probably like uh, you go with your personal experience go through spots trying to figure out the problem solving and that. I was obsessed with that, you know, I was obsessed with like, uh, really, like I would mistake a hand, I couldn't sleep and think about this hand in every single scenario for like four hours and it's just the way I was and like, that was probably the biggest, the biggest, the good thing that happened to me, that uh, I always focused on, just focus on developing a skill set and even when I started to win good, because when I was 19, I, I really crushed the Italian tournament but I it wasn't never enough. I was like, okay, I need to get better. I want to go, I want to move outside and play dot com. And there was the first guy to do it, uh, the first Italian guy to do it. So, you know, it was always like a bigger challenge, a bigger challenge, a bigger challenge. And, you know, it worked out. It sounds like you had like a growth mindset. You, you didn't care too much about like, you're just trying to survive and make more money.